Focusing attention. In this part, I am going to cover two ways to direct the attention of your students to different things in your recordings. The first one I have already discussed in another part of these tutorials, and it is by using your cursor. You have seen me do this throughout my recordings, and basically I just use the cursor to direct to different things as I am recording my presentations. This did not come easy, and at the beginning of my recording experiences, I didn't really manipulate the cursor as I am doing now, and this comes with a little bit of practice. But once that you have done several recordings, you're going to realize that you're going to be able to start using the cursor to signal attention or to focus the attention of students in different parts of the screen. One of the things that I will not recommend with a cursor is to make very quick movements because they are very distracting for the student. So for example, if I do this and I mention that, that and I go over this and it is a little bit more difficult to follow the video when the cursor is moving randomly from one place to the other. So it is better to keep it still and use it as you would use probably a laser to actually focus the attention of your students into a specific thing in your presentation. The other resource that you have to focus the attention of your students to different things in your screen is by zooming in and out. And also you have seen me do this at different times of these presentations. To show you how to zoom in and zoom out, I am going to bring back my Camtasia Studio window and I am going to show you one of my own projects for my students in which I teach them how to manipulate images using media that is downloaded legally from the internet. In this recording, I make use of zoom ins and zoom outs. And if you look at this part of the video recording, actually, let me close this up because you might find that this recording might come to you in this way in which it seems that all of the video and everything is integrated into a single track. It is, but you can open it, so to speak. So I'm going to grab on this very fine line over here and I am going to double click. That will bring the visual animations track within your initial track. And if you move in the timeline, you're going to start noticing certain zooming effects, like the ones that you see over here. So I'm going to come to this part and I'm going to let my video play for a little bit for you to see how the zoom is actually helping focus the attention of the student into different things. They work when they are combined. So the very first thing that we're going to do is open a brand new tab and we're going to make a search for GIMP and you're going to at this moment, the focusing of my attention was very close to the web address bar so students can see what I'm actually typing there. Once that I'm done typing there, then I zoom back out because it is important for me to show the entire web page that I want them to access. From my experience, students do pay a little bit more attention to my tutorials when they're zooming in and zooming out behaviors. And they don't work as well when you record a full screen and you leave it as that for the entire viewing experience. So I do recommend using zoom ins and zoom outs with care and not doing it in an excessive way because that actually has a detrimental effect on the file size of your video. Very well, let's cover quickly how to create a zoom behavior. And in the same way that it happened with the callouts, there's no specific need why I'm zooming in or zooming out uh, into different things at this moment. It is mostly to give you a demonstration of how that happens. So I'm going to move to a later moment in my recording and I am going to just show you how to create a zoom behavior. The first thing that you need to do is to place the head in the location where you would like the zoom to finish not to start but to finish and once that you have done that come to this bar over here and look for the zoom and pan button if once again if you don't find it over here you can come over here and find it in this list 
both this area and this area are dynamic and they're going to be constantly changing depending on your use of the tool. So we have placed the head and now we're going to click on the zoom and pan button. This window is going to appear on the upper left side of Camtasia and it's going to have embedded the actual zooming that we have at that moment in time, which this number represents and it is 141%. What I'm going to do at this moment in time is I am going to change the zoom and at that moment immediately Camtasia is going to add that behavior here. So even if I don't change the zoom level and I just move the area of the screen that has to be shown, that behavior is going to be created and when you actually play it, an RGB uh, is not going to be a zoom behavior but an actual motion behavior taking you to a different part of your screen. Nonetheless, we can undo that once again place the head where we think that our zoom behavior should end and now for example I am going to grab one of these corners and I'm going to get a lot closer to what I want to show so for example I'm going to get there and I'm going to play it again so you have a perception of what it is that I am doing and you have to do this too for your homework the mode of my image from an RGB so basically I got very close for them to have this in their viewing area and therefore they are concentrating into what is happening there once that I'm done with that part let's imagine that is right here I can come back to the zoom behavior if it's not open you just need to click there and I am going to click on scale media to fit the entire canvas or the viewing area. So I'm going to click there and there it is the full view and the behavior has been created over here to represent the zoom in or zoom out in your timeline. I'm going to play again both of them. Do these two for your homework. The mode of my image from an RGB uh, where we have the three channels to and those are the two behaviors that I just added to my tutorial. So I am going to place myself in the middle of both and I'm going to start zooming in into the timeline so I have a better idea of how this is working out in my video. One of the things that you can do is you can grab the edges of the zoom behavior and you can make that zoom behavior a lot longer. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to increase the size of that. I'm going to place the head here and I'm going to play it again. It's two for your homework. The mode of my image from an RGB. Uh, were so as you could see, the behavior of zooming out was very slow. And even though in this moment it looks a little bit jerky, it seems that it's uh, stuttering as the zoom behavior takes place. At the time of your rendering, it will be very fluid. So let's take a good look at it again. It's two for your homework. The mode of my image from an RGB, uh, where we have the three channels. So we made a very slow zoom out behavior. And uh, we can do the same with any zooming behavior. It can be a zoom in. For example, I'm going to make this zoom in behavior a lot longer. and you have to do this too for your homework. The mode of my image from an RGB uh, where we have the three channels to... So this helps considerably focusing the attention of your students onto different parts of your recording. Now having said how these long zoom behaviors work, there is something to be said about the compression that takes place when you do these recordings and the type of file size that you might get depending on the different zoom behaviors that you have. In order to explain specifically what is going on, I would like you to think about this area of the screen over here. And imagine that this is a video that is running probably for one hour. Basically what the computer would be doing is recognizing that this color over here is not changing at all and instead of compressing this over and over and over again for an hour, 
it actually just registers that there has been no change for an hour and it will not encode the information over and over again. That helps a lot when it comes to the size of the video productions that you get when you screen capture. Now, if you have a very slow zoom in and zoom out behavior, what is happening is that there's no steady area within your video. Everything is moving, all pixels are moving. Let me go back here. All pixels are moving. Look at the screen, the mode, and you have to do this too for your homework. The mode of my image from an RGB, uh, where we have the three channels. So as you could see, all of the pixels in my entire viewing area are changing because I have a very slow zoom behavior. And that actually is going to add a lot of information to your video file because the compressor is recognizing that the area is not solid color as it would be in a regular computer screen. So there's some balancing act that you need to do between how long your zoom behaviors are going to be and what is going to be the final size of your production. What I would recommend is not to alter at all the length of your zoom behavior unless you really want to use it for a specific reason and accept whatever it is that Camtasia suggests for that length and normally it's a little bit below one second. So the zooming behavior is fairly fast. Index it. Um, I would recommend that you do that and once that you are done doing your zooming behaviors, remember to save your project so all of that information is kept for your recording.